Good morning, y'all. I am finally caught up. So this is day four, day four, Saturday, 1.37 a.m. So now when I record, when I upload, we'll actually be in the same day. I was a day off. So our day four of prayer is prayer for the spirit of purpose. And the scripture is Proverbs 4 and 25. Proverbs 4 and 25 reads... Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. So today's commentary, seven steps to find your God-given purpose in life. And this is by Kevin Payne, Kevin T. Payne. Seven steps to find your God-given purpose in life. Number one is turn to the Bible. Number two is pray for direction. Number three is follow the will of God. Number four, promises of God. Number number five, living a purpose-driven life. Number six, how to apply God's purpose in your life. And number seven, a personal challenge. So turn to the Bible. He says, God has left us with a wealth of knowledge of the Bible to help us. I'm sharing knowledge, which what has been revealed to me through my personal lessons in life. I must admit, I don't have all the answers, but I can point you to the source that can help you find your God given purpose. I believe to live a life with both passion and purpose. We must continue to learn who Jesus Christ is and what he says our purpose in life is. We're created in his image, so his life reflects many character traits we should seek to live out on a daily basis. So number two, pray for direction. I often meditate and pray each morning using the Abide app to attain peace and gain a sense of direction before I write because I have faith that my writing will touch someone else's life and allow them to gain knowledge that changes their outlook on life. With this task, he says, I take on a huge burden. So I pray for the ability to articulate my words in a way that's most helpful. As you seek your purpose, understand that each day we live is a gift and ask how to make the most of your life by living by faith and not by sight. According to Hope for the Heart, you should notice first that in in Ephesians 2 and 10, the Apostle Paul says, we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God calls you to a purpose, to do good works, tailor-made just for you. And he gifts you with all you need to accomplish that purpose. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Ephesians 2 and 10. Number three, follow the will of God. For us to live with a God-driven purpose, you must first put down this life to gain life many are the plans in a person's heart but it is the lord's purpose that prevails that's proverbs 19 and 21 god has better plans for us than we can imagine and he does things which we may not be able to understand but trust in his will through scripture there are several ways we can live a purpose-driven life first john 2 6 and 17 says for all that is in the world The desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride and possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing along, away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. Take time and reflect if you feel you desire materialistic possessions or want pride and power. It's futile to focus on temporary pleasures because on our deathbed, we can't take anything with us. Besides, more than likely, your family will be by your bedside and they love you unconditionally, not because of what you have. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. That's Matthew 6. And 33. Number four, promises of God. Now that we understand what the will of God is for our life, we must look at the many promises of God when we seek first the kingdom of God. There are over 3,000 promises of God. 
But I want to point out a few that relate specifically in finding your God-given purpose in life so you can experience a, a career that aligns with your faith. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Romans 8, 28, 29. In all these things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, which is to be conformed to the likeness of his son. James 1 and 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Take time to review some verses that apply to your life and write them down and place them in different locations. This can help you in your daily walk and serve as reminders of the many promises that comes from Jesus Christ. Number five, living a purpose-driven life. Once we learn to live a life that's Christ-centered, then we will understand how we can glorify God in all things. In this way, we can lead a purpose-driven life for God. I was lost seeking worldly things like money, power, women, and status, but felt they were trivial because long-term they don't matter. I knew we all must face death, so I decided to serve a purpose that's bigger than myself. We all want to leave a legacy, but I asked myself, how can I do that in a way that can truly make, that truly, that can truly make an impact on others' lives? Rick Warren is a pastor and author who wrote the book, The Purpose Driven Life. In it, Rick talks about God's intentions to use our talents to do good in the world and explains God's five purposes for us. Number one, we were planned for God's pleasure. So your first purpose is to offer real worship. Number two, we were formed for God's family. So your second purpose is to enjoy real fellowship. Number three, we were created to become like Christ. So your third purpose is to learn real discipleship. Number four, we were shaped for serving God. So your fourth purpose is to practice real ministry. And number five, we were made for a mission. So your fifth purpose is to live out real evangelism. If you want an in-depth understanding of God's five purposes for us to check out this TED Talk by Rick Warren. Okay, so number six is how to apply, apply God's purpose in your life with the five purposes of God has for our lives. We can now define a singular purpose which, can, which we can live out in our areas, even our personal lives. To live your life fully with purpose, you must choose a profession you're passionate about and integrate God's five purposes for your life. That's a very important statement. I want to reread that. Remember, this comes from Kevin T. Payne. These are not my words, but he is. He says, to live your life fully with purpose, you must choose a profession you're passionate about, passionate about and integrate God's five purposes for your life. Last but not least, you must make sure you earn money to provide for your family. Some examples of Christians who do a good job of living a purpose-driven life by integrating their faith within their professional lives include the following. Dave Ramsey is a financial planner that has built a massive faith-based organization that teaches people the seven baby steps which is about to have about how to get, save, get out of debt, and create a future to serve others. Lecrae is a rapper that's helping lead the Christian hip-hop culture. Also, Lecrae owns his label that consists of artists like Andy Minio and Trip Lee. Steph Curry, a professional basketball player that has a god has a God-given ability to shoot the ball from anywhere. What's more impressive than his jump shot is his ability to relate to everyday people and share the gospel in unique ways. Michael Hyatt, a former executive turned entrepreneur who blogs, does speaking events, and has his online course. He's an excellent example of a business professional who still manages to integrate his faith in his everyday life. You don't have to be a preacher to share Jesus' messages. Above, I have showed you three ways to do it if you're a financial planner, musician, or athlete. Take time to reflect on what you love to do, what is your passion, and how you can align it with God's purpose in a way that can glorify God and give you pleasure. 
Number seven is a personal challenge. Often in my life, I set goals in each area of my life. According to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, because I'm very goal oriented and like to see progress being made. And remember, I shared this. If you go back to the, when I first talked about this, and I hadn't even researched this yet, and it tells you. So in Maslow's hierarchy of need, I'm going to place it so we can talk about it for just a minute. You see the peer, uh, you see the triangle pyramid at the at the very bottom, and that's when I talk about when we when I, the reason why I show this first is to understand a child. You have to understand from their level. So and and this is why it's very very important. And what this what this represents is at the bottom is the foundation, and the only way you can rise to the highest level is you got to get your you got to. You got to build up the foundation at the bottom before you can go to the next step. So basic needs has to be met. The physiological needs, food, water, warmth, rest. Then you got the safety needs, security, safety. Then you got belongingness and love needs. That's where your intimate relationships come in at. Esteem needs, feeling accomplished. And then self actualization is when you're achieving your full potential including creative activities so that's why when you find children that are hungry it's very hard for a child to be their best if they come into school um hungry you know um having slept all night because the parents fussing or they got a new baby in the house or just because they can't sleep because they're hungry so you have to understand that all these needs has to, has to be met and so um it's very, very important. Kids are not just something that you dress up and make look pretty for Instagram or for Facebook. Children requires a lot of work. There's so many things that they need and you're responsible for them getting that. Okay. And this serves as both a blessing and a curse because sometimes he says, I find myself having anxiety and trying to meet the goals that had been achieved by others, which are a sin. Don't focus on other people's goals and accomplishments. Worry about your own. You understand because I, I like something that one sex at Tina said. Uh, she said that your beginning may be my middle. So we're all at different stages in life. You understand? Uh, I talked about when I was in college and um, after I got my associate degree and I went back for my bachelor's. I was taking classes with this lady and um, she worked part time and her husband was basically the provider well i was a single mom working two jobs and in school and the professor asked her not me but asked her did she think that i'd be able to pass the course guess what i made a b in the course just like her working two jobs with two kids okay so it could be done it could be done you just have to put your faith in god and he says my challenge is that you will live your life in a way that glorifies god but march to your drum we are all created in his image but we each are unique and none of us will experience the same things in life dream big pray and then seek to do god's will religion within the united states is on a steady decline so if you're reading this article you now have a purpose bigger than yourself that you can contribute to that which will make a difference So, you know, kids need to know, and, and, and I'm focusing on the youth because I see so much that's going on, it's sad and it's hurting me, but they need to know that they have a purpose. Your purpose in life is not to just go get up, hang out with your friends and go find trouble to get into. I remember, I think it was in the fifth grade that, that each one of us got the little Bible. I think that Bible needs to be larger now that we get to the fifth graders. I don't even know if they're still doing that in the school. Since they took prayer out, did they stop giving out the Bibles too? I'm going to also share a link, an email address for this uh, actual, it's a uh, prayer Bible that, excuse me, a prayer Bible. So now we're going to pray. We're going to go into prayer for a life of purpose. Heavenly Father, I thank you that your perfect plans and purposes can never be frustrated, 
and that you are working quietly in the background in order that your divine will continues to progress to, f towards its ultimate goal as year succeeds to year. I praise you that you have given me life and made me a new creation in Christ. And thank you, Father, that you have a special purpose for my life too. Thank you that by your grace you are carrying out your purposes in the lives of all your children. That Christ is all and in all. I pray that this may be realized in my life too. Enable and equip me and our youth, I pray, to fulfill the plan and purpose that you have for us to do. And I ask that you would use each gift and every talent that you have graciously given to us to your praise and glory. Help me to fulfill all that you would have me do in my life. Help the youth, help us all, Lord. And may I be obedient, may we be obedient to your voice as we seek to carry out your purpose for our lives. May we rejoice evermore and pray without ceasing. May we give thanks in all things as we hearken to the voice of your Holy Spirit. And may we hold fast to that which is good and abstain from all forms of evil, knowing that this is your will for our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When you're lost, when you don't know what to do, seek first the kingdom of God and he'll lead you. He'll show you. He'll provide direction and guidance. Praying for our youth. Whenever you have something you want to do, go to God first. All right, you guys. Have a blessed night. Have a happy weekend. Make someone smile. Much love. Bye.